The next programme was first broadcast here on Radio Winchcombe on Sunday Just Gone. Phil Byrne. Something a little bit different. Radio Winchcombe 107.1 FM. And online at radiowinchcombe.co.uk. In the community, by the community, for the community, this is Radio Winchcombe. Hi, it's Phil here, five past nine. Welcome to something a little bit different. My guest is here, we're just doing a voice check. It's Paul Goddard, come to talk past life regression. He's a hypnotherapist, and it's going to be a fascinating hour. Past life or past lives regression. I just asked for an open mind, yeah? Let's kick things off with the average white band, though. Oh 
Pretty appropriate start off a chat about past life regression, methinks. The average white band starting off something a little bit different this week. Hi, yeah, it's Phil here, and my guest in the studio here at Radio Winchcombe is Paul Goddard. Hi, Paul. Hello there. Thank you for inviting me. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, yeah, and looking forward to our chat about uh, all things past life, hypnotic reincarnation and that. And you're no stranger to radio studios, are you? I'm not, no, yeah. I used to do hospital radio. Uh, Stroud FM, Forest Radio and, and all those different wonderful things so yeah I do like uh, Radio and Radio Gloucestershire recently as well. You were interviewed on BBC I was, Gloucestershire yeah, weren't you? Stopping swearing which was one of the more unusual clients I've had but very fascinating <laughs> That was hypnosis presumably. It was hypnosis yes. So you are a clinical hypnotherapist. I am indeed yes. You tra- was that the first sort of um, therapy training you did? The very first was uh, NLP, which I know you had a fascinating interview with somebody else the other week, which I listened to. Neuro-linguistic uh, programming. That's yeah. it, yes, absolutely. And uh, then from then I moved on to doing uh, hypnotherapy and it really got me interested because I liked helping people, but I've always had this fascination with the paranormal. I used to love watching that program Strange But True uh, quite a few years ago now. I don't know if you remember it at all. And they would talk about reincarnation and past life regressions and when I actually became a clinical hypnotherapist, it gave gave me a, a tool that I could actually investigate it myself and see whether what you saw on TV was as it actually was or, you know, it, it made me make my own mind up about things. So it's really good. There's some stuff on YouTube about your paranormal work, isn't there? There is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Ghosts of Gloucester. So if anyone also has an interest in the paranormal, you can go on my YouTube channel. If you put in Paul Gollard NLP in, you'll come across my YouTube channel and there's three Ghosts of Gloucester. There's Café René, uh, Poets Wine Bar, which is now called a completely different bar, and Café René. So uh, did capture some stuff, so make up your own mind if it's paranormal or not. And perhaps you'll do something on Presbury, because that's meant to be one, in, love one to of the most haunted villages. Presbury. Yes, so yeah, I, I think something coming for the future there, definitely. Yeah. So, NLP, hypnotherapy, and past life regression. What training did you have to do for PLR then? Past life regression, I... It was part of the hypnosis training, the hypnotherapy training I did, and that was a day of an intensive training full day workshop. But then I wanted to learn more, and I did extra train on top of done two extra trainings with um, Maria Wheatley, and she got trained by Dolores Cannon, who was a very well known and well respected um, past life aggression therapist, and has written many books. So that'd be something that uh, you can check out if you wanted to, um, and. Uh, also as well I learn myself as you develop practice learn your skills more you get to find your own way and your own style and, and what, what works for you and also as well, I always like watching other people's videos on YouTube and reading books it just gives you that idea I don't think you can ever not know enough why does somebody want to be regressed? I, I gather from the internet that half the world believes in reincarnation. That's that? that's correct, yes. Um, particularly what is, is interesting, um, if you go to places around the world, uh, some of the stories about past life regression are actually front page. They're not like the and finally stories, they tend to be over here. But you get people that want to go for past life regressions. Some are just interest, some just want to have an experience. So when somebody comes to us, say, Do you want to have an experience? Which some people want to just see what it's like. Other people want to do their own research so they can find out if where they lived, whether the local church, the names, dates, all match up. And some people also like to use it as a therapeutic tool. And I've had people that have come to me, there's there's one lady, I won't mention any names, but she was she was fearful of the water and after having an experience um, of drowning uh, and it was very interesting when she went on to a Titanic, which some sceptical people might say, well, yes, it's Titanic, so famous, but I could count on one hand just the really interesting stories about past life aggressions, and a lot of them are just mundane, normal ones. But after experiencing the self drown as being somebody else, her fear of water disappeared, and she was able to go in the shower, have the water go on her head, and just felt completely fine with, with you know getting herself wet in the shower after. So this is somebody that came to you with a fear of water? Um, it was actually, uh, you do get people who come to you because they have fears and want to go the past life regression route. This was somebody who just did it for interest, but that experience had the positive byproduct from it and she was delighted and let the lady who set this up 
know and let me know about it. And she also did her own research and found quite a few interesting facts were coming up about what what she experienced during that regression. So what happened? She under hypnosis, she went back to a supposed past life when she yeah. was on the Titanic. You see? Yeah, supposed last past life. I mean, some people say it could be metaphors that people are using to help themselves. That's I, I accept that could be that could be a possibility as well. But she went back and she was a man on the Titanic, and people tend to be able to be either male or female in a past life and some people get a bit embarrassed about that if you've got a bloke and they suddenly start saying oh I'm a woman they kind of find that quite a shock um, but they were in engine room three and they were obviously trying to get the water out and everything like that and she witnessed herself as somebody else it's like a memory so reliving a memory rather than it being like you're there of her drowning on the Titanic and um, yeah she lost her fear then afterwards did she survive she didn't survive no so that was that was her last memory of of taking her her last breath and uh, I mean she was fine and I'm always making sure that I'm watching people so nobody gets too stressed in a, in a situation because I want people to have a nice experience sometimes a little bit of what they're experiencing helps to release um, their anxiety and fears about things and particularly it helped this particular lady um, but she was delighted after but that's that's how she drowned on the Titanic and her name was John Smith which yes so it's uh, a common name unfortunately I didn't ask how you spell it because it was quite an unusual spelling it was a Smith spelt with a Y but she did mention that she was from uh, Northern Ireland gave that the place she began with beginning with an R and it was Royce Trevor or something like that was where this John Smith did come from when she did the research from it and I looked back on it afterwards to find out that that was was actually the case. Oh and um, that person had been on the Titanic? That, that person had been on the Titanic. It was an R, it wasn't the full name um, but it, there was certain evidence pointing to the fact that it, she could have possibly been this person. And how did it all work under hypnosis? How what what are you do, you doing? Are you working with the subconscious there? You're working with the subconscious mind. When somebody comes to see me, I said they'll go to experience, which may well be a past life. I never say it is definitely a past life. I don't say it isn't. I let people work out what it is because I've got no way of proving one way or the other. But I regress them. I usually take them to a corridor. There's different ways you can do it, but put them into a nice deep state of hypnosis. So there's corridors leading off to either side, and each one of those doors will lead to an experience, and wherever they are in their life now, they'll be drawn to one particular door, and then you'll be pleased and delighted what you can see through that door. So and then they go through, through yes, a different so door, a yes, different yes, lives. That, so that's, that's yeah, different lives, and it's in their imagination. So to begin with, it's just a, basically a doorway to experience that past life. I'm always very cautious when I take somebody through to a past life that I say to them that you know you, you just experience it and don't worry you can check it all out later I make sure I don't influence the person beforehand I have seen certain people and each person has their style they'll say what you come up with will be nothing that you've read in a book nothing that you've seen on TV nothing you've been told about in school I know with NLP that's actually programming the mind because the mind actually drops the, the not words so you're actually thinking stuff I've read in a book stuff I've heard really? in school so I make sure I don't say that to somebody so it's very much you might not get so much stuff you can take people on what's called a hypno holiday and they can make it up and they can actually just enjoy what they're doing but this seems to unfold with a hypno holiday they would think to themselves I'd quite like to go to Spain and, and be sunning myself now so they go off to that and they're creating it this is just stuff starts coming to people and quite often people after the experience will say to me I would not have expected myself to go there some people have an experience where they go to may, say medieval times and they are fascinated in medieval times and other people they just say well I wouldn't want to go there I don't know why my mind took myself there and, and they go it but they go through this door they're usually associated so they're looking at their own body at their own eyes and with the neurolinguistic programming work that I do some people are more visual so you're getting the visuals of a past life question like like memories when you think back to like your favorite holiday or something like that some people are what are called more auditory so they get the sound so they're hearing uh, it during the uh, hypnotherapy session and other people are more kinesthetic which is like myself so you get more of a sense where you are just get that feeling and I say to people however it comes to you during a session just allow it to happen and you can find out any information after and see if it corroborates or if it doesn't 
And are you making notes or are you taping this or what? I record it. I've started to recently, because people say some fascinating stuff, and part of why people like to come to me is that I record it onto DVD, I plug a microphone in so people can hear what they're saying because a lot of the times when people are in hypnosis they speak very quietly and it's difficult to understand so I make sure I've got a microphone quite close to their, their mouth, clipped onto their shirt, blouse, what have you. Uh, and then straight afterwards they get a DVD of the session that they don't have to wait for it, they can just take it away and then they can go home and, and show it to their friends or family, you know, use it as a coaster if they want to, if they're embarrassed to look back on it. But uh, that that's something that people really like, that they can look back on it. And I think it's important that people actually get it word for word what they say because for some reason, and magicians know about it as well, there's something called uh, paranesia where you credit more evidence to something you experienced and actually was there so that somebody can you know add more bits to it so it makes sure when they look back that they've got their whole session and they can't add anything or they can't forget anything so they can know exactly what they've said and done during the session what was that term called Par paranesia so that's crediting more um evidence to a situation than has been there magicians know this and use it uh to their advantage if you hear somebody who's gone to see a magician, they've done an amazing card trick, a lot of the times people explain the card trick, so if another magician heard it, they think it's impossible to do the trick that, like that. You just can't do it because they've created an imaginary belief in their mind and seen it a different way to what's actually happened. Even in life, you can get people that have seen a crime scene and you ask everybody what they've just seen and they've done studies of this everybody will have a slightly different experience of what they've seen and some people say yeah i definitely saw somebody and they had a gun and they've seen the video back afterwards and they didn't even have anything like that but that person could take a lie detector test of what they saw in that video of that mock crime scene and they could say yeah that person did have a gun they would pass the lie detector test they look back on the video afterwards and no there was no gun or anything like that but they weren't lying. They, they just weren't lying, they just tricked. created that. So I think that's why it's very important to make sure I record the sessions and a lot of the work um, that Ian Stevenson did who went round the world investigating, uh, he's, a, he's a doctor, and he went round the world investigating claims of children with spontaneous past lives. They would, he would make sure he read word for word notes of what the children were saying. So he would make sure he'd interview the children first hand because if he didn't, wasn't that specific about it when he went to do his research afterwards, he could find that, you know, he might have added more to the situation. And Jim Tucker joined his investigations much later on and they on together about had 2,500 cases of reincarnation and they said about 50% of those cases were sold which meant the profile of that child met one deceased person but they really make sure they asked that specific enough questions that they couldn't they couldn't um, misjudge or make a mistake of who this deceased person could be that the child was saying so that's what's it's called spontaneous past lives where you might have a child and they keep talking over and over again about another life they've had they want to go to another village another town another city another place altogether and just absolutely swear blind these small children that they want to go back to their real mother they sometimes get very upset sometimes get very angry sometimes get very confused where they are now so I, i've known people who have had children and they've said they've talked about their lives when they lived in australia and there were chandeliers and they could see kangaroos out their window and these are sorts of things that children shouldn't usually say at a very early age so i think that it's, it's important whenever you do any past life regression work or interviewing children with spontaneous past lives that you get that information down so that there's no mistake can be made, made at all. You're listening to Radio Winchcombe. It's Phil here on something a little bit different. I'm talking to Paul Goddard about past life regression. You were saying then about children. Do you find that, because um, often a child could be, um, it could be confused, oh, that's just a precocious child. But there are times, you know, a three, five-year-old come out with things that a child of that age shouldn't necessarily be talking about, shouldn't have the knowledge to come out with phrases like that. Does that happen up to a certain age in children? It tends to be around the age of four, five or six when children say these spontaneous past life stories. However, they can move forward later in life. Um, there was a TV documentary program on called The Ghost Inside My Child quite recently and most of those children would be quite young but some of them would be into their early teenage years 
tended to be most children by the time they got to their teenage years, the past life or possible past life memories would start to fade away. Um, but these sorts of things the children were saying when they've only seen programs like Teletubbies, etc., Sesame Street on the TV, there was one child who was particularly fearful of noises and bangs and loud sounds and would have problems with his throat and this child would often point to his throat and he would refer to his throat as my shot. Uh, my shot? My shot, that's what he used to call it. And his parents just used to think he was pointing to it and calling it my shot because it really hurt. Um, but his, doct his, his father was a doctor and they thought this has got to be investigated. So they investigated what was going on with his throat and they noticed that there was a cyst on his tonsils that could, well, or near his tonsils, so I should say, that could potentially turn cancerous later on in life. And they, he went in, they decided to have an operation. There were two parts of the operation, one part to remove the tonsils, and then at a later date, the cyst was going to be removed at another operation. Now, this child, you know, was, was very young and just sort of at that stage where he was beginning to communicate and not really watching many things on TV. His mum came to see him as he was coming out of the anaesthetic and said this really interesting story. I remember he's only about five or six at this stage. He said, my name was James. I was 18 years old in France. We were walking through the fields and their trees and then suddenly there was desolation. I heard somebody, I heard a shot come from behind me. It went through somebody else and hit me square in the back of the neck and I felt my throat fill with blood and as you can imagine her, his mum was just wow you know what on earth are you talking about here but what makes for me the story more interesting and more compelling is that afterwards they were going to take him in to go for the second part of the operation to remove the cyst after the tonsil had been removed. How old was this little boy? He was again this is the same about five or six yeah. years old the second part of the operation was going to remove this cyst but they discovered that after him experiencing this and saying this he was coming out of this anaesthetic that this cyst had completely and utterly disappeared and all the doctors were baffled by it um, but it just goes to show that that's something in the past it was a past life that was affecting him today and as I like to say in my talk how many times throughout our life has something happened in our past in this life only and affects us today so I think that's an important metaphor to draw on a conclusion from as well. Is it necessary to believe in reincarnation when we're talking about past life regression or can we go back to earlier parts in this life? Is that part of the regression process? It is part of the regression. I would say about 95% of clients that come to me have at least got an open-mindedness about past life regression. Um, a lot of them aren't usually hard on sceptics. Um, but I wouldn't say most of them definitely believe in it either. And I, I would say that most people do have a past life, if it's real or not, but they have a past life experience. Occasionally you get the 5% that don't get anything, and anybody who does past life regressions will tell you there's a few people that won't get anything. And I remember having one lady, and I sort of hypnotised and, and she was very clear at things happening in this life, her life she was living now only, but when I tried to go back into the door, they were all blank, and I asked her to ask her subconscious mind if she's had any past lives before, and she replied to me, no, and then I thought, great, what am I going to do for the next hour then? <laughs> but I tend to find I like to give somebody an experience, so if I can't give them a past life, which is very, very rare, I will do something else, because usually some people like to have relaxation or maybe then a bit of discomfort or give them something nice so they feel they've got their, 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 their money's worth out of the session and everybody goes away feeling happy from what I've done with them anyway. Why do you think she gave you that response? Was it because she wasn't under? She hadn't been hypnotised? She was definitely under, and people have such... You can see by people, it, it, when you've got somebody in deep hypnosis, not all the time, but you tend to notice certain things, like you get like an ap rapid eye movement, so you'll see their eyelids uh, fluttering. So, so that the shows, eyes become closed during hypnosis? Yeah, they, they, they're closed in hypnosis, and you look at their eyes, and they're fluttering a little bit, so it's a little bit like when you go into that rapid eye movement sleep when you're um, in bed and you're dreaming. So I know she was having that... It could possibly be that, one, if it is such a thing as reincarnation, she hadn't been reincarnated before, or two, if it's the metaphor coming up, you know, your, your subconscious mind come up with metaphors to help you, 
her her mind wouldn't go that far. It wasn't something that she could accept a, a past life experience. But if you speak to every single person, there will be just a handful, not very often, but where it's difficult to to get somebody to a past life. But they're they're incredibly rare. It's just about half nine. It is something a little bit different. It's Phil here on Radio Winchcombe. I'm talking to Paul Goddard. He's a clinical hypnotherapist. We're talking about past life regression. How are you finding it? It's quite a fascinating subject. Let's break for a piece of music and then we'll come back and chat more about some typical past life regressions. Why people often want to be regressed? Is it because of a condition, an illness or something? We heard about that little boy then with the, the cyst on his throat. Um, I'm sure there are many other stories like that. We'll uh, chat more to Paul in a moment. After a track which I've specially selected, I don't like to be too predictable, but this, if you listen to the lyrics here, um, was written in 1937. You know, it's not something new, this past life regression. Or should I say, talking about past lives. It seems we stood and talked like this before We looked at each other in the same way then But I can't remember George Michael and the track recorded by a whole host of people and I went through a lot of those recordings last night and I plumbed for George's uh, I thought it was really clear the, the words where or when it is Radio Winchcombe it's something a little bit different this week we're talking past life regression I've got Paul Goddard in the studio here he's a clinical hypnotherapist and is that the only way Paul that you can regress somebody with hypnotherapy? I know you get people who do past life uh, experiences with people and their mediums and they basically put their hands on their head and, and then come up with what this person says is a past life. So the medium. So the medium you? just yeah. tells somebody. Uh, so I guess it depends what your beliefs are and how which route you want to, to go down it really. Because there will be some people that aren't comfortable with hypnotherapy. Yes, uh, you do get people who do past life regression with meditation. I tend to find both hypnosis and meditation quite similar. 
uh, people that know about meditation and, and do hypnosis say that hypnosis seems to take you deeper. And the other thing I like to say is that you just slump down in a nice, comfortable recliner, whereas meditation is more about concentrating on the breath and keeping yourself upright and a lot more visualizing. But, you know, it, it's hypnosis is completely safe, and people go in and out of a hypnotic trance throughout their day anyway. It's actually been proven that people on the roads are driving in at least something which is called an alpha state, so that's a very light trance. So it's a little bit nerve-wracking when you sort of know that half the people on the roads are actually going to be in a hypnotic state. But, um, you know, that's what people call when they go on automatic pilot. They're just going off into... It's their daily things. journey. It's just a daily journey. And hypnosis is nothing more frightening, really, than drifting off into sleep. It's that state you get into when you're just about to drift off to sleep, but you're not quite awake either, or vice versa. When you're coming round, you know you're not fully awake, but you're sort of drifting. But who's in dreaming. control? The person is always in control that you're hypnotising. Sorry, the, so the, the, the patient. The patient. So the, the client that's come to see you is always in control. And I like to say all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. And you're basically helping somebody to guide this individual into that hypnotic state. And for any reason, if they become uncomfortable, I always let my clients know that if they want to open their eyes, they just can do so. And that tends to make clients feel a lot more happier. I think that a lot of the things that people have seen on TV where somebody's been given a code word and like on the Avengers and they go off and walk like a zombie and, and you know commit a murder or something like that, that just doesn't happen in real hypnosis sessions or anything like that. Um, but the only way somebody would get or potentially get stuck in a hypnotic state would be if the person believed that the hypnotist had control of them. So some hypnotists are very good for really making the person believe that you have full control over them, and they tend to be the ones that like to do the stage hypnosis. But when you actually tell people that you're, I'm helping you guide yourself into that hypnotic state that you're putting yourself into, that alleviates people quite a lot and people tend to feel more relaxed and the more relaxed you feel the more easier it is for a session of somebody to get the uh, possible past life if it is a past life from that session is it generally only one life that will come up in a session or could, could there be more it depends how most of the time people have had multiple past lives um, and it depends how much details coming out of of that session i tend to work it being around an hour for a session so that gives you plenty of time to do an induction for somebody put them into hypnotic trance and usually explore about two lives during a session people can come back as many times as they want to if it's really good and you're getting lots of detail out of it particularly if they want to find out facts and places and names then sometimes just one is what you really want to do to see what what comes up but i have had people that have come to me before and it, you must remember that or i must remember i should say is when somebody comes for me for past life regression it's all about the client that's come to me it's not about myself having a really interesting time i had one person who was a monk and he in, was in which in, life? In, in 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 the past life so he did a past life he went back to being a monk and under the regression i was asking him what are you doing now? And he was having prayers. And you ask another, what are you doing this day? I'm having prayers, attending the garden. And I said, well, go to a really happy day. And he was having soup. And it was, for me, quite boring. And I was thinking, God, I'm looking forward to the end of this life now so we can move on to another one. But when he came out of it afterwards, he thought that was just an amazing session. I really enjoyed it. It was so vivid and clear. So for him, it wasn't particularly interesting for me for it, but for him it was really good and he really enjoyed the session. Do you ever think that people are making things up just to please you and they haven't really experienced anything? I tend to find, I always ask people to be honest, and I, I like to believe that people are honest with me. Uh, and I also think it would be rather silly if somebody pays some money to have a past life regression if they're just going to make stuff up. Potentially when I'm doing my show about past life regression, they might feel I've got to make and I've got to do something here. But I tend to find people are pretty honest. Uh, and I, sometimes somebody struggles to get a past life by doing that corridor method with the doors. But I, I'll not give up. I will try different ways of getting somebody through to a past life. So for some people, they like to have something as a metaphorical mists of time that surround them. And then when the mists of time clear, 
then the session happens and then usually if you're happy you don't sound like you're getting flustered if somebody doesn't come up with something straight away then somebody would you know c come up with a with something in the session but isn't you know it, it's always a possibility that somebody's making something up i mean hypnosis isn't a truth drug so you've you've just got to trust what somebody's saying because it must be sort of where is the line for the the, the client what do you call them clients patients? Oh, I like to call them clients. clients yeah clients when they're lying there when are they actually tipped into hypnosis and for the person lying there it must be am i under now or am i not or i tend to find that by the rapid eye movements other things a hypnotist will be looking out for is changes in the skin you start to notice the muscles relaxing so sometimes so when somebody's in a hypnotic state their skin starts to just go a little bit more red and that's a sign to me that somebody's going into that hypnosis it's important to remember that when a client comes to me i say to them that you'll feel relaxed some people actually do experience the past life a lot more vivid and a lot more realistic than other ones some people it's very sketchy unless you say that it's unique to you and that the session when you're you're through it you but you'll basically feel relaxed and these visions and feelings will come to you that if they know that then they know it's working if if you don't say that they might think this isn't working i'm not hypnotized so it's important to get that through to the client beforehand when they they come that's all my pre-talking hypnosis and what voice do they speak in their own voice or do they adopt a voice from a previous life it can be both sometimes people are just talking this is what i'm experiencing they seem to be a little bit more step back from it so they're saying yes i'm doing this and it feels a little bit like this and i'm getting the sense of other people i've had their voices have changed and sometimes sound a bit younger um one lady i had a session with her her voice saying became quite because she was from yorkshire it, it saying became that very yorkshire type sounding thing and you know instead of like i i you know about mice it would be like I, I, there, there were mouse here and, and just things like that that people start to change and another thing that I find quite interesting during the session I mean people do know this but it just would have to think rather than just coming out naturally and people seem to flow out with these things naturally they will sort of talk about if they were shopping they will say if they've gone back quite a few years not just recently but say 1800s or something like that they'll talk about dropping their basket whilst they're shopping so they're dropping their bag and just little phrases and things that people, instead of their bag they yeah, basket. So it's just little phrases and things that people tend but to change across the gender as well if somebody said i was a woman in this life mm. does their voice change to to be sort of not not really no it's maybe a bit more lighter but if somebody's a man they don't suddenly sound like a woman but just maybe a little bit more of a a relaxed softer edge to their voice but then again, you also get some people who just sound exactly the same. Yeah. I've read um, some some material on this. I've seen uh, Chris Lee at the Mind, Body, Spirit Festival in Cheltenham. I just saw his stand there. He's a Canadian guy, I think, isn't he? And I've read Brian Weiss's Many Lives, Many Masters, which is quite a fascinating book. But he started out by... He wasn't working with past life regression, I don't think. He was doing some other therapy with them. And then this patient actually gave him some information during this and that's how his work came about i don't know whether you're familiar with his work he, I, I believe during these the, I, I do know a bit about his work um i believe the session you had with the person who did the neurolinguistic program in uh he was talking about timeline and usually you go back to a time in somebody's life when they had a traumatic event and you get them to through nlp techniques view it in a different way and have more resources than they had during the time and i've had people that have come to see me and i've done that and they've just gone through and done a past life so when you do this sort of work just expect the unexpected and don't just dismiss it so if you're an nlp practitioner master practitioner you do timeline work something they go through to a past life if it's not your belief just go with it anyway because you can get some incredible healing work and usually people can make themselves feel a lot more happier and confident after and there's usually always after past life aggression a, a general improvement in somebody's mental state after the um the people that come to you where do they generally regress back to 100 or 200 years or have you got people going back to bc and things like this i've had people going way way back to roman times i've had people that go back to hunter gatherers um i've had people that have a more recent past lives uh jim tucker dr jim tucker i mentioned at the beginning 
he with his work with the t- children he said that there's around 18 months from a traumatic death that the child would be talking about their spontaneous past life and how they were killed tended to be on average around 18 months before a child would come back again and he said that usually with children talking about past lives they need to have a quite traumatic event happening to actually be able to help them to remember it without being put into a hypnotic state like, or like, like this that. young boy under the anaesthetic like said. this young boy under the anaesthetic i mean anyway can go back to any period any time uh, i mean some of them are very interesting it was it was during a live demonstration and talk that I was doing about past life aggression I had somebody who I do know this this gentleman but I also know and trust him and he came up with the um, I think it's if I'm getting the pronunciation of it right the uh, Scharnhorst uh, it was a, a ship that uh, was a German ship in the Second World War and was it was attacked on Boxing Day in 1943 and it was quite a vivid experience for him now it's you know you could say he may have read it up in history and that's 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 something that could have happened but you know he he seemed to be quite convinced that what he was coming up wasn't something that he'd read about before i mean he's he's open minded he's not saying he definitely was this previous person kept the name Carl in a past life um, but he's open to it uh, but what really got him interested is that I take him back before that to when he was a child and he said his, his father was a clockmaker and I asked him why is he a clockmaker can you actually give me the name of the clock that he's mix uh, not maker sorry a, a clock fixer what he's actually fixing at the moment and he actually gave the name Osberg clock and somebody was googling on their phone afterwards and this actually came up so that was quite striking how, how on earth he pulled that name out of the bag but then again the subconscious mind sometimes can not forget things so he might have not intentionally but maybe had the antiques roadshow on in the background and it was just playing and somebody was talking about one of these Osberg clocks and it went into his subconscious mind and at that particular time he was able to to bring it back up but I like to test people whilst doing hypnosis if the person's happy to go ahead and do that and this is something I mentioned with this gentleman so if anybody happens to know that particular story that's that's listening at the moment if, if they're happy to get in contact and just get me to ask some questions without me knowing what the answer would be because I like to test it to find out whether there's something more interesting going on in the past life or it's what's been heard about, read about on Wikipedia not that he would intentionally read about it but if anybody's happened to be an expert on the Second World War and Germanic stuff um, if if they can actually get in contact because I like to ask those questions that somebody shouldn't really come up with and that would be something quite compelling so I'm very open-minded and I like to, to test my clients if they want to be tested but I don't put pressure on anybody if they don't want to be tested if they if they want those names dates and facts I'll put that into the session if they just want to have an experience I'll do that for them too so I like to craft the session for my client and what their wishes and needs are have you not corroborated that uh, ship's name then? It, yeah it is it's actually um, we were looking it up during the session and yes it did get uh, attacked in 1943 on, on Boxing it? Day it's S C H. O R N H O R S T. Sean Horst, I think. Yeah. That sounds like. So, mm. yeah, so Sean Horst, that's the name of it. So, if anybody does know of uh, that story, I'd be really interested to hear from them because uh, that's something we've, we've agreed that we would do is to test to see whether this was something that could have possibly just been picked up by history lessons or whether it was something that possibly really did happen so I would love that we'll give out your details Paul at the end yeah and the program will be available and listen again so yes if anybody's got to rush out or something they can still get the details um people often present because they've got a problem say with a phobia claustrophobia I've read things about this claustrophobia they've gone back to a past life under regression and found they've been buried alive or something like that sounds horrific have you ever had instances like this have, you know and people at the end of the session have said i'm more comfortable with enclosed spaces or whatever the phobia was definitely the lady with the titanic you heard about earlier but i've had a lot of people that have problems in the way they interact and where they talk to people and maybe being too generous with money I don't want to mention too much without saying what, what's actually happened to the client, but they tend to, when they've had a past life, it all, they all say to me afterwards, 
I can I can see that now in in what I do in my life, and that that makes me realise why I act in this way. So, yep, it could have been a past life, or it could have been just that story which was being mentioned by their subconscious mind to help them to move them forward from that stuck state they are now. And um, on the Radio Winchcombe Facebook page, I put you know the fact that we were doing this chat yes. here on something a little bit different. I put that I didn't know which image to use for past life regression, and I used the signposts of past present and future because past lives can affect the present or because of what's going on in the present can mean that somebody's coming for past life and then it will take them forward into the future yes. in a better state hopefully absolutely i when i do my talks i always make sure that i get the point in the end that if you believe in reincarnation or if you don't the main thing is is to make sure you make this life a good one and I, I like to read this out towards the end of my talks and if I could do so now that would be really good this is it's an extra I'll read out uh, it's from Convoluted Universe by Dolores Cannon and this is a client that she had called Dan so she asked him at the end of his life what are you doing now and what do you see Dan responds I'm just in bed dying alone and the secrets are dying with me there's no way for people to use what I have because I haven't shown them anything or I haven't taught anybody. It's just me alone and that's it. I have my eyes closed. What's the matter with you when you die? I'm just old and I get a feeling of regret and loneliness and just complete sorrow. I'm looking at my face right now and there are a few tears in my eyes and they just close and I look like I don't know what's happening. I could have done better. What do you mean by complete sorrow? Like the whole thing was a waste, like your whole being says you should have done that better or I wish that wasn't the way it was and you have that sorrow well up inside you. And that's what I can see in my eyes as I see them close. I then took him to Beyond the Death Experience and had him look back over his entire life to see what the lesson was. To do something. To make the most of any situation you create. People are going to be what they're going to be. So you can take responsibility for yourself or you can never do anything. And that gets you nowhere, which is worse not accomplishing anything when you know you can. I think that's pretty relevant in my life now. Everybody's got to do what they've got to do and you can be defeated by it and never do anything. If you're going to look at every single flaw that you have, you still got that input to make, that help to give. And it's worse if you don't even do anything and don't even try. And I always say at the end of my talk that if you believe in reincarnation or not, the past is history, the future is mystery, and the present is a gift. So where do you tend to do your talks, Paul? I'm talking to Paul Goddard about past life regression here on Radio Winchcombe. Well, I've actually got a workshop for four hours uh, this coming Saturday at the Fox and Elm pub. Um, it's Where's on that? my Facebook page. It's in Gloucester always helps to mention where it is Fox, so it's Fox and Elms pub in Gloucester if you go onto my Facebook page Paul Goddard NLP and Hypnotherapy or even if you just look me up on Facebook Paul Goddard you will see um, an, an invite that the person who's putting on this event has put on and if you send them a, a, a message or, or click go in then I'm sure you'll be delighted to, to see you and i certainly be delighted to see you at the event. So that's a talk about past life regression? It's a talk about past life It's more of a workshop and I've also set it up for people that are a little bit more resistant and maybe find that visualising is a little bit more difficult for them because I get people say, I can't visualise, I'll just close my eyes and all I get is blank. If you remember what your fridge looks like, if you can know what it's like when you open the door and where all the shelves are and where you put your milk, where you put maybe water, where you put your salad bits, then you can visualise. Otherwise, we'll get to the fridge every single time thinking, what on earth is this thing here for? So you can visualise, but it's just making it so it's a little bit more clear. So I'll be doing various techniques as well to help with that visualising and also as well doing something towards the end where somebody will become 
the hypnotist and uh, I'll help guide them, guide somebody else through a past life, but I'll do it in a very uh, safe way that I will be able to step over if anything anything goes wrong at any point. Well, I shouldn't say wrong, if, anything, if they get in difficulty and want me. So that's this coming Saturday. That's this coming Saturday. Fox and Elms. Fox and Elms pub. What part of Gloucester is that? It's um, Stroud Road area. Okay. So they can find details. Paul Goddard, NLP and hypnotherapy on Facebook. And what if somebody wanted a private session with you, Paul? Private session. um, You can send me a message. uh, Paul at paulgoddardnlp.co.uk. Or I'm writing that down. Paul at paulgoddardnlp.co.uk best way to get hold of me is on the landline which is 01452 525050 525050 50. I'll say again 01452 525050 50. and if you go to just search me on um, on Google Paul Goddard NLP or Paul Goddard Gloucester you'll come across my website and you should see my logo and my happy smiling face on my website good Thank you, Paul. Time's thank beaten you. us, I'm sorry. Um, we're heading up to the news here on Radio Winch coming in just a moment. But thank you for taking the time to come and share with us this fascinating subject, past life regression. If you believe or not at home, I'm sure you found it a fascinating time, whether you believe in reincarnation or not. Next week on the show, we're talking green funerals. Sorry, it's all about death, but um, there you go. I was dancing when I was 12. I was dancing when I was twelve I was dancing when I was out I was dancing when I was out I danced myself right out the womb I danced myself right out the womb Strange to dance as soon. I dance myself right out the room. I was dancing when I was eight. I was dancing when I was eight. Is it strange to dance so late? to dance and Elliot soundtrack, T-Rex Cosmic Dancer. 
Yep, the chat will be available on Listen Again, something a little bit different, past life regression with Paul Goddard. Yeah, thanks for listening. Talking to Ian George next week, Ian George, funeral director from Cheltenham, about green funerals and how to plan for one. You know, a natural funeral, that's what I mean. The show is recorded next week. Um, I'm away for a couple of weeks, but uh, I'll still be here on Radio Winchcombe Sunday evening and Tuesday morning. Take care of yourself and I'll catch you soon. After the news Sunday, it's Chris Martin with his magical musical mystery tour. Tuesday, it's Bob Preston with 10 Bob's Worth.